Bayus, be you well? A concerned alabaster asked as he sheathed his blade. This necromancer must pay for his deeds. Bayus stated as he studied the sanctuary hall. First we have to find him, friend. Nastro there fought a proud battle to protect this sanctuary for his unwanted master. I say we start at the podium. Alabaster nodded as he approached the onyx podium. A silent Vayu stared only at the large organ sitting in the corner of the sanctuary hall as Alabaster began searching through the podium. Rummaging through the podium, Alabaster searched each side of the interior podium walls for any switches or levers. Bayus began walking towards the organ in the far corner, passing the beheaded Black Knight skull, then looking back at his busy friend. Alabaster sat back as he watched Bayus pass him in the podium, noting a fresh batch of blood on his greatsword as he walked. Both friends knew to leave the subjects alone, as they noted each other's demeanor. The organ was made of onyx, just as the podium, with huge golden pipes emerging from the large organ's console. Bayus ran his fingers over the keys and stops as he looked at the sheet music that laid on the console. Bayus sat down on the small bench and cracked his fingers together in front of him as he prepared to play, surrounded by three walls of stops and six rows of keys. Engaged by a sense of nostalgia, Bayus lightly pressed on the keys in front of him as the pipes above him enveloped the hall with a blast of sound. Alabaster watched as Bayus began playing different notes, stepped on different pedals, and pulled certain stops on the console as the sanctuary was filled with a very somber tone. For minutes, pipes bellowed and rose as the song continued. Bayus felt the gauntlet of his friend come to rest on his shoulder as the two let the song fill them. Slowly, the song began to slow and soon came to a stop as echoes still reverberated in the hall. Vayus, if I had eyes, I would be crying. Well done. Still, though, mind explaining the means of your playing? I'm sorry, Alabaster. After studying this score, I saw that every fourth note was written just a little off from the rest. I assumed that playing just those would open some passageway hidden in this nave, but I just got lost in the other notes as well. I think I needed it too, Sir Grey, but we must move on. I'm not actually sure I want to be here anymore. Alabaster patted Vice's shoulder as he stepped back. The sound of pipes again filled the room as Vice began playing though this song did not fill the room with quaint emotion. The select notes that Damon played instead filled the room with a dreaded feel, slightly startling Bayus as he played. The sinister song ended much faster than the previous, as the jarring noise of the stone floor under the podium being shifted alerted the two heroes. Alabaster and Bayus watched as the stone floor pulled itself back, revealing a stairway leading deep into the earth below as fog began regurgitating from the passageway. This is it, Vayus. You should probably prepare your spells, lest I finish the fool off before you even reach him. Alabaster challenged Vayus. Let's say what's waiting for us. I don't suspect he has much power left after his last show. Vayus smirked as he stood up and drew his sword. The duo quickly descended down the stairs, weapons at the ready. Gone was the stonework of the tomb, now they were again surrounded by the messy tunnel work of the necromancer. Alabaster prayed and enchanted his shield with a glowing light that illuminated through the darkness that began overtaking the deep tunnel. As the two heroes exited the tunnel, they found themselves inside another deep open cavern that was filled with large rocks and stalagmites. Further down the cavern, a hooded figure stood up in front of a large shrine that resembled a large insect that Alabaster immediately recognized as a shrine of the evil deity Urgothoa. The necromancer turned towards the heroes, 
the light from the candles around him almost being absorbed by the black robes that hung and covered his body, revealing only his withered human face. An angry growl filled the cavern as the necromancer cast its hands forward and strung a sequence of distorted words together as multiple dark rays of power shot forth from his hands. Alabaster rushed forward, seeking cover behind a large rock as screeching rays of negative energy pulsed by his helmet, fired by an irritated necromancer. Fools, you have interrupted my ritual for the last time. The necromancer hissed as he swirled his hands into cool shapes, glowing with a purple haze. Alabaster peeked his head out of cover in the hopes to catch a glimpse of his ally Vayus charge their enemy's position. The blue daemon chanted as he casted his own spells, increasing the size of his body and strength. Enchanted with arcane might, Bayus barreled forward in a fierce charge with his greatsword cocked behind a giant demonic body for a fierce and momentous attack. Alabaster, seeing his friendly rival charging ahead, forced him to join the fray as well, rolling out of cover and moving twice his normal pace to catch up to the large daemon Bayus. The necromancer rolled his eyes as he watched the two warriors charge him. <sighs> So predictable, you heroes. With a jerking hand gesture and a quick incantation, the necromancer summoned three skeletal warriors and fired a bolt of black energy at Bayus, who charged forward unflinchingly with fury in his eyes. Alabaster dashed quickly to intercept the ray, moving just in time to let his breastplate seemingly absorb the negative energy and quickly sidestepping as to not stop the momentum of Vayus. Vayus, do be a friend and set me up! Alabaster yelled as his ally rushed past him, lightly slapping Vayus's back with his thin sword. What's the point of a competition if I help you win? A grin spread across the daemon's blue face as he quickly approached the three skeleton warriors and swung his great sword with great force. Three skeleton warriors quickly became three piles of broken bones and dust as Vayus's great sword pulsed with blue magical sparks as his mighty swipe cleaved through them all, embedding itself into the dirt of the cavern floor. Suddenly alarmed at the power of the large blue daemon standing in front of him, the necromancer jumped back and threw his hands up, stringing a sequence of distorted words together to conjure a large wall of bone that erupted from the floor, separating the two enemies. Alabaster ran towards Bayus from behind. I knew you couldn't resist making me look good. Bayus quickly kneeled down and braced himself as he felt the weight of Alabaster's ornate full-plate armor land on his shoulders. You haven't won till the enemy lies slain. Alabaster felt a surge of momentum as Bayus quickly stood up, launching the knight into the air just high enough to clear the bone wall. The necromancer took another step back as the knight landed in front of him swirling his thin bladed sword in a dramatic fashion until the blade rested in front of the knight's emotionless faceplate. I must say, it's been rather fun chasing you down, but Kelimbor will no longer tolerate your misdeeds and cruel misunderstandings of life and death. If you had any last words, I would use them to cast a spell. The knight confidently bellowed as he once again flourished his blade and readied his rounded shield. You pesky paladins always forget that all your armor won't protect you against my wicked touch! The necromancer leapt forward with a withered hand stretched out and grasped Alabaster's breastplate. Waves of negative energy began pumping into the knight's body as the necromancer grinned from his hood. Alabaster, seemingly unfazed, used his blade to quickly swat the withered hand away but was quickly blindsided by a sudden burst of bone dust as Vyus erupted through the bone wall. Alabaster's faceplate was dismantled as large pieces of rubble struck it, 
shocking the necromancer as he struggled to understand the face that he looked upon under the knight's helmet. A ghostly visage of a skull stared out from the helmet as the knight threw his hands up in contest to his daemon friend's show of power. Is this how you feel when I liven your barren spectacles? Alabaster, have you just spent as much time swinging your sword as much as you danced around your enemies? They wouldn't have time to grab ya. Mayus bellowed as he smiled, still staring the necromancer down with his great sword. Well, I'd rather not bore my adversaries to death, lest I be deemed Mayus the Grey. Alabaster replied, still shrugging at his friend. You do know the Grey stands for how dull you all right? The knight questioned as he patted his blade on the large daemon's arm. The necromancer, realizing that his foes were anything but the run of the mill heroes, quickly took advantage of the opening he had while the duo bickered, casting unnaturally fast as he summoned two black masses of evil spirits. Bayus muttered an incantation and began to almost vibrate as he began another charge toward the necromancer, enchanted by magical speed. The two dark spirits hissed and began to hover towards the mad, dashing daemon, but were both repulsed backwards by a sudden wave of bright, positive energy emerging from the paladin. Kelimbor, lay these souls to rest and grant us the strength to end this blight! Alabaster erupted as he held his glowing engraved shield above his head. The spirits wavered but did not disperse, roaring in dismay as Bayus dashed past them. The necromancer once again retreated, waving a hand into the air and covering his immediate vicinity in dark shadow to conceal himself. Thinking himself safe for one more moment, the necromancer began another spell, but quickly felt the thud of giant footsteps coming towards him looking on in horror as glowing yellow eyes pierced the magical darkness. Maius again ushered his mighty attack through the air and felt the satisfying thump of his curved sword embedding itself into a mass of flesh, following the body down to the ground. With a quick wave of a hand, Maius dispelled the magical darkness to see himself standing over the gored body of a dying necromancer. The two spirits again swiped for the blue daemon, but felt the sting of a holy shield slam and ricochet off one spirit into the other and back to the holy knight. Alabaster dived forward in a dramatic show and swiped through one of the spirits with his magical blade destroying it entirely with holy force. Looking up quickly, the paladin outstretched a glowing gauntlet and blasted the other spirit with rays of divine magic until it dissipated with a sad echo. Gasping for air as he looked upon his own body and to the two heroes who stood over him, he forced himself to ask one last question. <laughs> How is it, in all my power, it is a tiefling and an undead paladin who would be the end to my path to lichdom? The dying human coughed, almost <laughs> laughing as he asked. <laughs> that is a question you can ask Kellum for. Alabaster stated with his ghostly stare as he began a quiet prayer before digging his blade into the heart of his foe. Vayus, now sure the battle was done, began shrinking back to his normal, yet still large, stature. Well fought, my friend. May Kalimbor behold your moit. Just keep in mind, twas my sword that brought the villain his dying breath. Vayus exclaimed as he holstered his great sword to his back. Alabaster nodded silently as he kneeled over the body of his foe in prayer. <sighs> Could you be any more of a sore loser, Sir Grey? You have to admit, this was indeed more fun than sitting in a meadow with your big book. The knight asked as he stood up. I could have handled it on my own, without your flashy showboating. And no, Alabaster, 
I'd happily take passages and tomes over passageways and tomes. Vayus mumbled, dusting his silk garments off. The heroes gathered their bearings, surveying the cavern again to check for loot. Look there, in the dark corner. Vayus pointed to the dark end of the cavern not far from them. Alabaster turned to look in the direction, shining his shield towards the darkness to reveal a stairway carved into the rock wall that led upwards. Check it out while I get proof of demise, would you? Alabaster asked Vayus as he began sifting through papers and trinkets on the floor of the shrine. Make it quick then. Vayus grunted as he began ascending the rocky stairway. Flimsy torchlight flickered in the shoddy stairway as Vayus walked, letting the distant clanking of Alabaster's armor fill the void of silence. Vayus thought again about the elderly woman he had found in the cage, covered in her own feces as she begged for his help. Upon the alchemy table, he collected the potions and vials along with a journal that belonged to whom he could only assume was the necromancer. As the hags stretched and screamed, bleeding on the iron bars, Vayu sat and read at the table. Many entries were written about how the necromancer had found this tomb, and the poor caretaker that had been trapped in when the collapse happened. She was used in many experiments and attempts to summon or create a succubus, but with so many failures, she was left to rot in her cage. The daemon did his best to help her, out of pity, unlocking the cage she was held in at a distance by his magic. Unfortunately, the woman was far gone, and almost as soon as he had opened the gate, she was upon him, screaming bloody madness, blinded to Vyas's own appearance. A gut-wrenching scream was stopped short as Vyas's greatsword cut her down the middle swiftly and without second thought. Stinking blood and filth splattered Vayus, forcing the daemon to cover his nose and exit the room as her filth continued to spill. Closing the door behind him, the loud sound of a clamoring fight from the sanctuary hall ahead echoed through the hallway as Vayus leaned against the door to the alchemy room. Going over the disturbing event over and over in his troubled head, Vayus did his best to think about what his ally would have done in the same situation. Alabaster surely would have held his ground and helped her, wasting his time with the lost cause. Fortunately, he wasn't there, and Vayus wasn't the type to let a crazed human near him. Alabaster yelling in Kelimbor's name, Signal to Vayus that his friend may need help. Still disturbed by the thoughts of the old woman, he began walking down the hallway to the sanctuary. Hearing a light and rapid scratching of nails on wood behind the closed door to the alchemy room. Vayus stopped as he finally reached a doorway at the top of the stairwell. Putting the thoughts of the old woman behind him as he began checking again for traps. After a few minutes of double checking and waiting for Alabaster to catch up, Bayus pushed against the heavy stone door, letting the gaze of the moon sky pry into the dark tunnel. The two heroes stepped out of the tunnel and into the moonlit forest mountainside, looking down at the town not far below. The hidden door they exited from was covered in dirt and moss, easily posing as a rock on the mountainside. Also explaining how any undead had made it all the way to the town without having to climb through a trap-filled tomb and cavern. Alabaster hefted and adjusted the necromancer's body over his shoulder as he began trotting down the mountainside. <sighs> we'll get camp set up. And see you here in the morning then, Alabaster. Vayus began as he looked around the surrounding area. Oh no. Alabaster stopped in his tracks and looked back to the daemon tiefling. 
We have fought too hard today and endured too many traps for you to stay here on the mountain and not in a room fit for a hero. Alabaster raised his voice as he nodded his head for Vayus to follow. With another quick look around him, Vayus looked again at his own wounds and burned silk robes, knowing he did long for a comfy bed and drink to tend his sore muscles. This never ends well for us, Alabaster. It will be worth it. Alabaster quickly cut in as he ran his gauntlet across his faceplate in a smiling gesture. Vayu sighed as a quick smirk spread across his own face while he began descending the mountainside with his friend. Matt and Damon.